Why don't we open with prayer? Lord God, you have given us many good and worthwhile things to do while we are in the world, but our commitments often exhaust us and make us lose focus on what is most important. Teach us how to balance the work you have given us with rest that we need, and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, I need to offer an explanation to people out there in television land. We got rejected for putting this online last week. Uh, she got banned from Canada and the United States. <laughs> <laughs> Two countries! <laughs> because we used the DVD. Oh, no. oh. Yeah. Now, let me, I'm, I'm explaining it for them so they'll understand what's going on. Oh, wow. and, and so I had called Luther and Howard and I said, I told them what we wanted to do. They said, I said, do I need your permission? They said, that's fine, just go ahead and do it. So that's what we did. And, and so then we got rejected. So it's not on the internet, it's not online. And, and so, we, so I'm going to do it today in, in a little different. We're going to watch the DVD and then she's going to shut the video off. And then she'll come back in for the discussion. I think I, I'm trying to work it around so they understand what we're talking about too. And, and since I, and I may not get this straight up for this Bible study, but there's a lot of other Bible studies I like using from Luther and Howard that have the DVDs too. So I'm going to work it out so that next time I'll know what to do and they won't get rejected. Okay? So that's what's, that's what's going on. So anyway, you can put it on pause or whatever and, and we'll listen to you watch the DVD. Um, yes? Pastor, um, Stan had a really good idea. I'm going to continue to do this, and then I will have a copy of it that we could actually oh, oh, use in the church. Oh, you'll just cut it before you put it on. Right. All right. I'd like you to grab a Bible and open it to Exodus 20, page 78, in front of the Old Testament. Exodus 20. Okay. The question that, that Pastor Newman poses in the leader's guide, which only I have, but is the question, is rest all that important? This morning, uh, it's probably not the best morning to ask this question because we turned the clocks ahead. <laughs> but on a scale of, of 1 to 10, with 1 being completely pooped, and 10 being just so up and out and good, feeling good and wonderful. Where are you this morning? Between on that scale. Three. <laughs> three. Oh, I've heard a couple threes. Okay. <laughs> Five. Uh-huh. Negative nine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we could we could go there. Okay. <laughs> I, I'm sure all of us are in different places, you know. Mm -hmm. Some of you, all I have to do is look at your faces and I can tell where you are on the scale, you know. And, and uh, Pastor, Pastor Newman says, a good workout at the gym teaches us a lot about how God made us. During your sets, you are working your muscles, breaking them down, wearing them out. During rest time between sets and between workouts, your muscles are rebuilding themselves stronger than before. Effective physical training requires this regular rhythm of workout and rest. Workout and rest. And that same work-rest rhythm is just as essential for your mind and spirit as it is for your body. God established a regular work-rest rhythm for us when he created the world in six days and rested on the seventh. He set aside that seventh day and blessed it as a day from rest for us. He even established one of the Ten Commandments to provide this regular rhythm of rest for us, for our, that rest for his Old Testament people. Exodus 20, verses 8 to 11, somebody... Want to read that? Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. 
Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, you or your son or your daughter, your male servant or your female servant, or your livestock or the sojourner who is within your gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Is that okay. how far I'm supposed to go? That's as far, yep. Okay. Yeah. Growing up I could never figure out how how you stop your livestock from working. What does that mean? You know, your servants, your soldier, within your, you know, how do you stop those things yeah. from, you know? People that have dairy cows, I think they have to milk them seven yeah, days true. a week. Yeah. 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 Oh, I said it was seven days a week, mm -hmm. twice a day. Yeah. I grew up on a dairy, yep. Yeah. No rest for the weary. And, and uh, often prevented dairy farmers from being able to take some time off and go off for the day. and. Mm -hmm and do whatever they wanted because they had to be back for milking at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, 5 o'clock, you know. So it was 4 in the morning and, and 4 in the afternoon or 5 in the afternoon and just 7 days a week, you know. And the only way they could ever work that out was if they knew somebody who knew how to milk and who would volunteer to come in and do the milking for them while they were gone, you know. And, and so there were farmers that did that. Anyway, that's off of my old life uh, as a farmer's kid. And, uh, but rest. Okay. Pastor Newman again, he says, to restore and to rebuild our exhausted hearts, minds, and spirits, God calls us to gather together and rest in His presence. Worship renews our baptism by washing away the sins we confess. In communion, God gives us His own body and blood sacrificed on the cross to remove God's wrath from us. Through his scriptures, he reminds us of our glorious eternal future, bringing perspective to our chaotic lives. Jesus sends us back into our homes, communities, workplaces, rested, renewed, and equipped for another week of service to him and his work. Could you, could you relate with the guy on his way to work? And all the things that happened from the moment he poured his coffee in the morning till he got out on the expressway and, and got to the point he just couldn't stand it anymore and, and, and pulled along and walked out into the wilderness, you know, uh, to find some peace and quiet. Um, and so I, I, what, what are things that distract us or that keep us from getting everything out of worship on a Sunday? All right, I, 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 I'm asking. Start, you know, start giving me distractions that happen in church. Oh, okay. when you worship. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Bird, bird flying by the window. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, you have the church or what? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. We <laughs> we had a, we had a robin up in East Troy and for five years in a row. It would show up in the springtime. And there were windows up, glass windows up on this one side of the church. And, and always in holy, or always in Lent and stuff, he'd come and start <laughs> on the glass, you know. And, and it got so everybody looked forward to him coming back every spring. And then, he, but after the fifth year, he wasn't coming back anymore. So that's about their lifespan. And, but he would come, and people would just start laughing. Because he, you know, here would come that Robin. Robin poking on the glass, you know, and that became a distraction. Of course, if it happened during my sermon, what do you do then to get back on track, you know? Because everybody's ha, ha, looking up there and seeing him up there again, you know, and that was kind of thing. Distractions in church. What? Cute babies. Cute babies. <laughs> okay, look at cute babies over here. Oh, thank you. <laughs> what else? Yes, oh, I'm way out. I'm sorry. Just, just internally, you know, other problems and things on your mind. You know. Okay. Thinking of what you need to be doing after church. Yeah. Yeah. After church. Yeah. How old do you do church and what? Oh, do you do? Oh, yeah. What? Well, uh, football game. On Sunday afternoon. Got to get home. In time for the football game. You know? You just skip Bible class. 
And then you just get right on. Then you just get right on. They're right in. You're throwing a party. You're throwing a party. Having people over to watch the Packers or the Cowboys. And and you know, so that you're just like we're just get distracted. Things that you have to do tomorrow, that you have to do this week at work. Uh, it, it's just it's just distractions after distractions. And I heard it again on the radio yesterday or whatever about our attention span. <laughs> They used to say it was 10 minutes, now it's down to 7. I find my, my mind wandering, you know, during church sometimes. And, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just, you know, I, I just find my mind. And then all of a sudden, I, I, I'm off wherever I'm off, and then all of a sudden I come back and I go, now where was he? You know, I lost that part, you know. Um, Noise. Yeah, we have the, our mindsets, and and the person that was doing this on the news. I'm sorry, I got to say, the person that was doing this on the news and are talking about it on the radio. And then said it comes because of all the fast pace, because of our computers, and because of their cell phones, and because of the internet, and because of all these things that get us, you know, going. At, you know. And, and so easy to plug in and all that. And he says, no wonder we've lost mm -hmm. our attention span. Yeah. And so now we're down to seven minutes. Mm -hmm. And I always said that, that, and maybe it's even more important now, I think I mentioned the pastor too, I said, I was always going to say, I was going to preach the first half of my sermon, and then say, okay, let's get up. Well, I have a cup of coffee and we'll come back for the second half. You know, just to get you people's attention span. I mean, if people have, if we zone out, what, what, are we, what are we getting, you know? What are we getting if that happens? And, uh, so there's, there's distractions all over the place in the church and there's distractions out in the world. And he talks about all those things, deadlines and, and commutes and, and, you know, just all those things that just, our life is just, you know, where do you stop? And and the idea from society that you're only successful when you're working on your, you know, you're when you're working man, I'm like a crazy person, you know, and that's what success is, is get to get ahead that way, and and, and, uh, and that's true too, is it not? Some of it is inflicted upon us. Right? By our employers, uh, by other people out there. Uh, spouses. Spouses. <laughs> Spouse. Either way, husbands go home and say, Honey, can you do this? Honey. <laughs> so it, 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 that, it does. <laughs> that works you know, both ways. What, what, what did God intend by rest? Is it more than just spiritual rest? Is there physical rest too? Mm -hmm. uh, I had had two brothers that were in the band with me in high school. They were Baptists. In Sunday afternoons, they were in their bedrooms just sitting, mm -hmm. resting, that kind of thing. Uh, what, what, what is that rest? I mean, we definitely need physical rest, don't we? So on the day that the Lord has said, I've said that, that we should rest from it, what are you doing? What are we doing? Out working on the house, painting? Get everything done out, outside, around the house that you didn't, couldn't get done during the week? You know? So there goes our time there. Uh, but maybe you're a person that finds that kind of work on the weekends resting. Because it's not your other six days of the week. I don't know. And, and spiritual rest, though, is, is very important to God and, and for us in our lives. And, and what does that mean? Worship, right? Mm -hmm. Coming to hear God's word, 
to receive the sacrament. Coming on Sunday to have fellowship with our brothers and sisters in the faith. To spend that time perhaps receiving encouragement from somebody in the church or giving encouragement to somebody we see that needs encouragement in their life. Uh, singing hymns. <coughs> uh, I, if, if, because Satan loves to take that stuff away from us. And, and so he loves to take it away from us too by filling our Sundays with things that have to be done, places to go, you know, obligations, family obligations, and so on and so forth. So that's what God gives us to refresh ourselves. And that's what Satan takes away from us, or is trying to take away from us, that time of rest in church. I've lost my place. Oh, okay. Then he asks the question, what advice can you give someone who doesn't feel restored after worship? Cool. Does anybody give your... That's kind of an odd question, huh? I didn't hear. Oh, I know the first is up. What advice can you give someone who doesn't feel restored after worship? I'm sorry. Well, I've been to some churches before and I disagreed with what the pastor was preaching. It was a Lutheran church and he was preaching things that were against the Lutheran doctrine. So, you know, talked to the church, talked to the pastor, and he said, Well, this is how I feel. It wasn't Missouri City, but I was wrong. And then we eventually left that church. Yeah, it isn't how the pastor feels. It's what does God's word say? You know, about something too. Oh, well, I should have stayed there. Huh? I should have stayed. No, there. no. I'm just saying. Sometimes pastors say, "Well, this is what I believe," and and notice the I in his statement, and not this is what God says. And he wouldn't preach certain things because. He was afraid he would lose his job. So. I, yeah. <laughs> I, I can see Hash is getting put into that position, you know. And, and especially when it, sometimes when it becomes the sins of a congregation, you know. And, and uh, like sometimes it can be hard to face when it's more than just one person or two people. To face the whole congregation and say, you know, like, well, let the hammer fall you know, through God's word in that kind of situation. And, and if I'm reading you right, you know. But anyway, I, I, I don't know. It may come up and say, I had a rock tight in church this morning. You know, what would you, what would you say to him? You know, I, I just couldn't concentrate. Go ahead, Mr. Pray with them or ask them to pray to ask God to let the Holy Spirit be stronger in them and yeah. to get something out of the church service better. Okay. Okay. I could, or, or you want to sit down and talk about it? You know? And, and then if it becomes, if it's more complicated than that, to say, I think you ought to go talk to Pastor. <laughs> and, 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 let him, and let him talk to him about it. You know, what's going on. Go ahead. Well, yeah, I think there's all kinds of possible reasons that people can experience that. Sometimes it's just the normal course of life. of life. Sometimes you just, you have to kind of fight through it and you say, well, I didn't really enjoy it or get anything out of it, but it's like, like eating a meal that you didn't especially like. You still needed the nourishment. You just have to kind of do it. Brussels sprouts. But I've, I've also found too there's some some people that have like internalized a, a message of um, that, that they have to be worthy and they can't they can't allow themselves to just receive and feel joy. So 
to be in God's presence and to hear the message of absolution and the kinds of things that for most of us as Christians give us peace and release. There's some folks that maybe maybe when they were little kids, you know, they if they had bad parents or someone said, you know, you're never going to amount to anything or, you know, you you aren't any good or something. And they, they've internalized this message that I always have to prove that I'm worthy and that I'm good enough. And so being in the presence of, of God, just instead of Makes receiving peace, it, it stirs up this yeah. need to, yeah. to perform more. And that, that's something that can be dealt with in, in prayer and, and teaching. But, but some, for some people, those, those issues can go way back. Oh, go way back. And, and sometimes they're... They're instilled in your mind, yes. like a, like information on a hard drive. Mm -hmm. You know, they just don't go away. Uh, and then it becomes a matter of learning how to cope. You know, with those kind of. I'm not good enough, Lord, to be here in your presence. I or you know, I committed a sin, God, and I and I just I don't belong here because I'm, I'm such a bad person, such an awful person, and and. So I just, yeah, and so that keeps him from hearing the grace right. and the forgiveness. Yeah, some people feel like I don't deserve to have peace because I'm so bad and they, they can't get past that. Yeah, and, and when, you, when you grow up with that kind of thing, it, it, it is just a battle. Because Satan wants to keep you there. And so you're not only fighting him, but you're fighting what was put into your head, you know, by people around you, your parents, your siblings, your, you know, there's those bad messages. <clears throat> Something important on you. Yeah. Uh, but, rats, I gotta quit. I wanna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and continue this next week, because I, I, I have all these pages of stuff, and I, but I think there's more to this of, of rest uh, that we, I'd like to talk. Oh, next week I won't be, we will be oh, two weeks. <laughs> Okay, so this class is going to go on longer than <coughs> may what may be anticipated. Okay, uh, so we're gonna we're gonna we'll just pick up in two weeks. That's all right. I'll do this subject. All right, let's close with prayer. Now you notice I got done time. I noticed the clock this time. Gracious God. You have called us to find rest for our souls. Lord, that could be a very hard thing to do for us in our world today with all the demands that life brings. But Lord, you call us and, and may we hear your call and, and find that peace for our souls in prayer, in worship, in singing of hymns and other ways that you've given us to to get ourselves refreshed so that we can go on. So gracious God, bless our week and keep us strong in our faith as we walk in this world that is just filled with so many dangers for us. So God, may your Holy Spirit continue to be in our hearts and continue to fill our hearts with those thoughts of, of Jesus and the cross. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, I didn't get